Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Supreme Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This week we'll be telling you a story about Declan Duggan who was heavily involved with Chums Charity. Chums were a great support to Declan when tragedy struck his family. But first, the Luton Irish Forum provides wonderful service to the Irish community in Luton and the surrounding areas with a wide variety of services. Recently, they had great celebrations because over 50 of the volunteers received the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service. Nolet Hanley is the Chief Executive Officer and I began by asking her, when did they reopen after the lockdown? Well, we first opened in September last year and we were able to open for two months with restrictions. Uh, then we uh, sadly had to close in November when um, the, the country went into lockdown again and then we were actually all able to open up for one week coming up to Christmas where we did the socially distanced Christmas dinners and also included um, deliveries to people who weren't feeling well enough or feeling safe enough to come in. And then finally we reopened again on the 17th of May and um, we have gradually built up our numbers so we now have uh, three bingo clubs a week, uh, we've tea and chat and we've our, our class but we continue to run some of our activities by Zoom, uh, be it Irish language, the calligraphy class and another art class every week. Well you opened up exactly right on cue as well because of course you got the Queen's Voluntary Award for over 50 of your volunteers. So two years back, it was September of uh, 2019, uh, Lord Mackenzie of Luton nominated us uh, for the Queen's Award and uh, there's a rigorous process so we had to be visited by the three Deputy Lord Lieutenants and um, that happened just before Christmas of 2019 and we had an amazing day, um, 30 volunteers packed in when it was, uh, they were allowed to do so and they were uh, really keen to tell um, the Deputy Lieutenants about their experience, how um, they contributed and what difference it made to them as well, to their well-being, to their physical health um, and we were told just before the announcement in June uh, 2020 that we've been successful we think we got a, a month's kind of notice to um, get ourselves ready and um, then it was formally announced on the Queen's birthday in June. Wow now tell me about the volunteers what did they actually get did they get a special certificate or what was presented to them on the day? So the group got a beautiful crystal and a certificate um, from Her Majesty. Um, they also then individually got a badge and a beautifully made card by the Luton Irish Forum Calligraphy Group, um, one as a memento, uh, which is, says thanks for your support and your volunteering um, to the Luton Irish Forum. 
What do you think this is going to mean to Luton Irish Forum and the volunteers, of course? Well, I think it makes us more established in Luton, even more than we've been, been before. Um, it gives a huge sense of pride to our volunteers when the Lord Lieutenant spoke about their contribution and she gave the most amazing toast which she actually um, recited, May the Road Rise to Meet You, um, before the, um, the toast. Um, you could actually see that people had tears of joy in their eyes. Um, they were absolutely thrilled. Um, they don't do it for acknowledgement, but they I think to feel acknowledged actually makes it even more joyous. Some of them have volunteered 24 years. Um, that was particularly remarkable because sadly those people aren't able to volunteer with us anymore. Um, so what was amazing is that we managed to get almost all of those volunteers along. Um, through a big effort by themselves and their families and um, they were able to join in and um, celebrate the occasion with the existing volunteers. Now I know that you're planning on um, having a memorial mass as well, tell me about that. So we have sadly lost a number of uh, volunteers, members and um, the wider Luton Irish community has uh, lost people during Covid. Um, some of it has been Covid related and some of it hasn't. Um, we thought it'd be nice to mark their passing by having a memorial mass which we have organised for the 2nd of October. In preparation for that the Luton Irish Forum Choir has been meeting up because sadly one of the people who died and who died from Covid was John Hutchinson. Um, he was a choir master um, and led the choir through a number of years um, pr in preparation for St Patrick's Day Mass every year and um, we're doing it in honour of him particularly the, having the choir but um, the, the mass will be to remember every single one of those people that have been lost. Yeah and I know you're trying to get a lot of the families involved by actually asking them to bring gifts to the altar in remembrance of their loved one. That's right so families will be invited um, in the way of the Irish tradition to bring something of significance, a memento. Um, for, for John it might well be the Sean Aria de Mass uh, booklet um, which was very close to his heart um, and they will bring one of those items to the, the, the altar and um, it just gives it that bit more significance as well. This is a tremendously important award for the Luton Irish Forum and so well deserved. These awards are incredibly hard to come by and the fact that Luton Irish Forum has gained this award just signifies what a huge contribution they make to the Luton community. Not only now but over the past 20 years the way in which they join with all the other communities creates for a very, very lovely community spirit here. We are very lucky that members of the royal family have visited Luton before to see the wonderful work that, that goes on here. Um, and who knows, next year I know, I know that the royal family will be moving around the country, so I'm sure that if they have a moment, they'll be delighted to drop in. But there are no promises. Well, I joined Luton Irish Forum after retiring, and that is uh, t 13 years ago now. Uh, and uh, I've been on, on the Board of Trustees for 12 years. I've been a Vice Chair, and then I've been uh, a Chairman. Now this is going into my ninth year as Chairman of the, of the Luton Irish Forum. Well, when I come here first, there was a small little uh, house, really, uh, very much uh, a, a bungalow-type uh, building and of course we uh, extended it and uh, you can see now how, how much we've, we've developed it and uh, it's now we've got uh, three floors and uh, uh, everybody has a place and a room and we have some space to let out when we have people who are interested in coming. And of course uh, look at Luton Irish Forum, they do wonderful work here for the Irish community here for many many years in Luton. Well, the working group, they, they are so uh, busy and of course now even there's more and more demands on them after the pandemic and they, they help every, everybody out, not just Irish, they help anybody who comes as best they can to d direct them in the, right, uh, in the right direction and to obviously advise them and where they can uh, get some help and support. Well, the volunteers play a big role in that and uh, they come and they, obviously they encourage people to come to the bingo, if they can come out, we uh, arrange sometimes for transport for them in order to at attend. But in the main, and particularly during the pandemic, we delivered food parcels, we did shopping, and uh, our secretary
country, she makes uh, hundreds of phone calls in a, in a week and uh, keeping people in touch. And it's, it is actually uh, a lifeline for people. From your point of view as chairman of the Luton Irish Forum, it's a fantastic time to be involved because, of course, you've just um, got the Queen's Award for Voluntary Services. What does that mean to Luton Irish Forum? Well, it it's means an awful lot to the forum. We, we have always tried to have the best quality standard and we have been involved in applying for the highest quality standard as, we, as we've gone through. We have a, a view of doing, if we're going to do it, do it right. And uh, we're, we're absolutely delighted. It's a privilege to receive the award. Everybody was pleased and there are some uh, they all attended on, on uh, Friday and uh, we had a fantastic day uh, of celebration and uh, reminiscence of people who uh, set up the, the forum. Hi, I'm Elisa Rushby and I'm a trustee at Luton Irish Forum. When St Patrick's Day 2020 was cancelled and we went into lockdown, we were all pretty down about it. And to be honest, we could have just rolled over, but instead we looked to our core values of being caring, connected and committed and we delivered practical and well-being support to our members, many of whom were vulnerable or socially isolated, even before lockdown. And Luton Irish Forum adapted very quickly. This included going shopping for those who were shielding, and our popular tea and chat moved online. We even managed online bingo. Uh, and for members with no digital connection, the befriending service, led by the amazing Marion Curtis, made over 2,000 calls, checking in on members who might not see another person for weeks on end. And our welfare service was needed more than ever as people faced financial uncertainty. Theresa, tell me, how long have you been volunteering here? Um, about four years now since I retired. I worked in Luton and then when I retired I did a bit of voluntary work. So this was a, a, a big place to come to because it was so well known and so well respected. And, and I just like what goes on here. So. And I suppose you meet so many people each week. Oh my gosh, yeah, and, and from all walks of life and all ages, and you know, it's a, a, a diverse community here. Irish Forum is a bit misleading because it's anybody and everybody is welcome here. Yeah. What does it mean to you to receive the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service? I've been doing voluntary work for many years now, so it's the first time that I've actually been recognised, and that was very nice, you know, to, to, to think that people actually take notice of what you do but it's also part I wouldn't have got it unless I was part of a bigger team so it's a, a recognition for all of us for everything that we do yeah and really for the Irish Forum for giving us that platform if it wasn't here what would we be doing we wouldn't be volunteering for them would we so it's a lovely place where volunteers are welcome and valued and then everybody that uses the facilities are respected and, and welcomed and valued in the same way so you know it's, it's just a nice place to be. Many congratulations to everyone involved with the Luton Irish Forum. You do great work caring for the Irish community in Luton. Now we're going to take a little break. See you in a few minutes. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lala Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Supreme Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family run business.
No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Welcome back. Now we're going to tell you a story about Declan Duggan. We all know it's a parent's worst nightmare when a member of our family gets tragically killed. Well, that's exactly what happened to Declan's son, Kevin. I began by asking Declan what happened to Kevin and how he died 23 years ago. My, my son was 19. Um, he was like every other teenager. He was just starting out in life. Um, he was uh, an engineer, trained to be an engineer, and he loved his sports. Great uh, keen golfer. And he went out one night, uh, one evening, and uh, he never came home. Um, he was dropped off at a pub to go with his friends. Um, he accepted a lift to go somewhere, and tragically, he's, uh, he lost his life that night. Um, 10 o'clock on, it was a Halloween night back in 1998. It was uh, a terrible blow to our family and uh, we've never got over that ever since. Kevin accepted a lift of uh, a, a boy who he knew, another 19 year old. And uh, what Kevin didn't know, Kevin had been out working all day. It was a Saturday, but he'd been working all day. And the boy had been drinking all day long. This is what we all found out after the event and uh, Kevin accepted a lift and that the lift didn't last too long. He was speeding, typically and tragically, in lots of uh, teenage deaths on the road. The passenger uh, uh, in the front seat always seems to be the one that gets killed. The driver wasn't killed and the person, um, the other kid in the back seat wasn't killed, uh, but my son was killed automatically. Uh, they spun round and hit a tree and my boy never survived. The two boys else in the car did survive, but it transpired, and I found this out a week later at my son's funeral, that the boy had been drinking all day long. And uh, as you can imagine, I was horrified at hearing that, and we had to start then a, a major investigation, which I had to work with, with the police and all sorts of different people, over, you know, not just then weeks, but months and years later, to find out the truth of what really happened to my son. And you fought a long battle because at that particular moment, with the way the laws were in this country, at that particular time, no prosecution could be brought. Because the boy was unconscious and was very severely hurt, blood samples could not be taken. Uh, so we could not prove that he, what he, where he'd been all day long and what he was up to all day long. It took me years of a campaign to actually discover exactly what did happen. And you eventually got the law changed to call it Duggan's Law, didn't yes, you? Yes, it was, the law was changed uh, in 2002. I, uh, I, I had some great support from MPs. Uh, it was cross-party support. I worked with two great ministers. Uh, Charles Clark was the Home Office Minister and David Blunkett was the Home Secretary. But anyway, in 2002, Duggan's Law was put in, into the statute books in the Houses of Parliament. Now, of course, nothing replaces the death of your son. But we are standing here today on the golf course that was built in his memory. Tell me about that. Well, um, I was a publican at the time, and we used to do lots of various golf. Uh, we had a huge golf society. Lots of my golfing friends said we should do something, Declan, in memory of Kevin. Because we, we, we had all the, the tools to do things. And we worked with uh, Luton Borough Council who gave us this beautiful piece of land as you'll you know if you pan round and have a look you'll see we had enough land to, to design and build a nine hole golf course and a drive and a putting green and a driving range bay and we could name it after my son my son was a keen golfer so it was a it was a fitting tribute to my son was to to do something like this we opened the driving range in 2002 and uh, we then got to work on the golf course took just over three and a half years to build and in 2005 we were able to open this uh, beautiful little project and uh, it's an amazing uh, little tribute to my son and we get great comfort by coming up here and great comfort by seeing so many young people using it.
Well, we're so, so sorry, uh, Declan, to hear about the sad passing of your son, and it's a great, great loss. But of course, early days after your son passing away, your daughter, Roisin, got a lot of support and help from Chums. Now, tell me how that all come about, and tell me a little bit about Chums Charity and the wonderful work that they do. Well, Chums is primarily uh, a bereavement charity set up 23, 24 years ago. And uh, it just happened to be starting at the same time. Uh, the two ladies who, who, who opened it up um, knew there was a gap for uh, a, a, a bit of a hole in the system where young children were being left out of any bereavement uh, counselling or support or help. And it just happened at the same time or around about the same time as my son Kevin was killed. And my daughter Roisin, who was only 10 at the time, was one of the first children to be uh, taken on by chums and uh, she got great support and help from, through them and she's uh, she spent she spent two or three years with them and in fact she's never left them she's kept in touch with them all this time and uh, so chums is uh, is out there they're 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 Luton or Bedfordshire based uh, they cover the whole county and they've now spread their wings to work with uh, children with all sorts of uh, difficulties, mental health issues, anxiety and stress. Uh, but uh, they do some great work in the community and especially for children who have uh, had a bereavement in the family. So Roisin, tell me, how did Chums help you? So they contacted my mum and dad when um, Kevin died and they took over all of my counselling and they gave me somebody to talk to. What was it like for you at that particular time? It was very scary and obviously very sad, but I felt like I couldn't talk to anyone without upsetting them as well, like my mum or my dad. So Chums gave me someone that I could get my emotions out and, and um, how I was feeling without upsetting anybody. We saw your son Ralphie here playing golf today and of course he's yeah. following in his uncle's footsteps, Uncle Kevin, and uh, he loves golf I believe. Yes, he loves playing golf. We try and come up here as often as possible. He really enjoys coming up here and he's getting quite good. And then watching other families enjoying it as well is really heartwarming. What would you like to say to young people that goes out socialising and maybe get lifts in cars? Don't drink and drive and try not to get in anyone's car that is uh, drinking because you never know what's going to happen and it could be you and it could be or it could be somebody else. Now over the years of course you got heavily involved with Chums. Yes well we often did fundraising events uh, many years ago in the pub and then at the 21st anniversary uh, we all had a, a great meet up and I got asked would I come on board uh, officially and I did. I'm working with some great people at Chums. It's an amazing uh, charity who do fantastic work and my job is to try and raise as much money as I possibly can to provide the service throughout the county of Bedfordshire and uh, I love doing it. Now today we met some of your friends of course who are here with our rally cars because we know that you're organising a big rally in Ireland, fundraising rally, and of course a lot of your chums are going over there aren't they? Yes. Lots of my chums, it's a very good way of putting it uh, Martin. Um, yes we put the call out, we got contacted by a, uh, a company called S3K based down in Chichester and they found out the work that chums do. Um, they, they do fundraising rally drives all over Europe and have done for the last 15 years. Anyway, they've, they found us out, they've chosen Chums. We're working with them now and we're doing this beautiful scum run. They call it a scum run rally and it kicks off in Ireland uh, next year in May 2022. And it's one of the things that I'm really, really looking forward to. Now, how can people donate to that if they wanted to help out Chums in any way at all? Well, listen, Chums has uh, got a website which is www.chumscharity.org. Um, if you go onto that, there's links to all the work that we do and there's links to, for donating and, uh, and just to see that the work and the service that we carry out in Bedfordshire. Because you've also written a book, I believe. I have. Um, my book was published in the uh, House of Lords uh, back in... 2013. Uh, I was lucky enough to be invited there by David Blunkett, the, ho the former Home Secretary, by Lord Bill Mackenzie of Luton, and we were able to publish my story uh, 
and that was the uh, that was the the uh, the grand place in the in one of the rooms, and uh, the book just tells a story of of what I did and how we did it, all the support that I got and the, the friends and the uh, the whether it was councillors or whether it was uh, uh, MPs or or just family friends over the the four or five year period. The, the book tells a story of how we got that law changed and how we actually got this beautiful golf course up and running and got it designed and built and how we raised the money. It's a really good positive story to tell about, uh, which, which, which was, you know, that was a terrible tragedy to happen. But there's a good positive story to come out of all this and this is one of them here. What's the name of the book and where can people get hold of it? It's, the book is called In the Name of the Sun. Uh, it was published by Filament Publishing and you can get it on Amazon. Declan, there are many, many families that can relate to your story tonight. We're so, so sorry to hear, you know, what's happened to your son, Kevin. God bless you, and thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you very much, and I'm really uh, glad to be part of this uh, your Irish in the UK TV show. Fant fantastic. Thanks ever so much. Declan, our hearts go out to you. I can see you're still suffering so much pain and sorrow. Take good care of yourself and your family. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back with his show from County Mayo next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock and we are here at 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. Until then, bye bye.